two weeks in august by frank m robinson this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org reading by matt ferrard two weeks in august by frank m robinson the humblest events sometimes result from the most grandiose beginnings you'd never imagine space travel starting this way for instance i suppose there's a guy like mccleary in every office now i'm not a hard man to get along with and it usually takes quite a bit more than overly bright remarks from the office boy to bother me but try as it might i could never get along with mccleary to be as disliked as he was you have to work at it what kind of guy was he well if you came down to the office one day proud as punch because of something little johnny or josephine had said it was a sure cinch that mccleary would horn in with something his little louie had spouted off that morning at any rate when mccleary got through you felt like taking johnny to the doctor to find out what made him so normal or maybe you happened to buy a new super eight that week and were bragging about the mileage the terrific pickup and how quickly she responded to the wheel leave it to mccleary to give a quick rundown on his own car that would make you feel like selling yours for junk at the nearest scrap heap well you see what i mean but by far the worst of it was when vacation time rolled around you could forgive a guy for topping you about how brainy his kids are and you might even find it in your heart to forget the terrific bargain he drove to work in but vacation time was when he'd really get on your nerves you could pack the wife and kids in old reliable and roll out to the lake for your two weeks in august you might even break the bank and spend the two weeks at a poor man's sun valley but no matter where you went when you came back you'd have to sit in silence and listen to mccleary's account of his vacation in the adirondacks or his tramp in the canadian wilds or maybe even the old french quarter the trouble was he always had the photographs the ticket stubs and the souvenirs to prove it where he got the money i'll never know sometimes i'd tell the wife about it and she'd sniff and wonder what kind of shabby house they lived in that they could afford all the other things i never looked him up myself tell you the truth i was afraid i'd find the mccleary's lived on park avenue now you look forward to a vacation all year but particularly during the latter part of july when what with the heat and the stuffy office you begin to feel like a half-done hot dog at a barbecue i was feeling even worse than usual as i was faced with spending my two weeks in my own back yard most of my vacation dough having gone to pay the doctor the only thing i minded was having mccleary find out about it and seeing that phony look of sympathy roll across his fat face while he rambled on about the vacation he was going to have it was lunch time and we had just finished talking about the latest on television and what was wrong with the administration and who'd win the pennant when bob young brought up the subject of vacations it turned out he was due for a trip to the ozarks and donley was going after wall eyed pike in northern wisconsin i could sense mccleary prick up his ears clear across the room how about you bill donnelly asked me got any plans i winked heavily and jerked a thumb warningly toward mccleary making sure mccleary couldn't see the gesture my vacation is really going to be out of this world this time i said me and the wife are going to mars dry you know even better than arizona for her sinus even with the wink they were caught off guard for a minute mars donnelly said feebly edging his chair away yeah sure great place never been there myself though young just gaped then grinned as he caught on i understand it's a wonderful spot he chipped in 
i casually peeled a hard-boiled egg the wife had packed in my lunch bucket and leaned back in my swivel chair it's really swell i said dreamily but loud enough so mccleary couldn't help but overhear drifting down the grand canal that evening the sun a faint golden disk behind the crystal towers of marsport i let my voice drift into a long sigh and reach for donley's sack of grapes about this time mccleary had gnawed his way through a big pastrami sandwich and waddled over he stood there expectantly but we carefully ignored him I always wanted to go myself donley said in the same tone of voice he would have used to say he'd like to go to california some day pretty expensive though isn't it expensive i raised a studiedly surprised eyebrow oh i suppose a little but it's worth it the wife and i got a roomette on the princess of mars for a hundred thirty nine dollars and fifty cents that's one way of course mars young sighed wistfully there was a moment of silence with all three of us paying silent tribute to the ultimate in vacations mccleary slowly masticated a leaf of lettuce his initial look of suspicion giving way to half belief let's hear some more about it young said enthusiastically suddenly recovering from his reverie oh there isn't much more i said indifferently we plan to stay at red sands hotel in marsport american plan take in marsport with maybe a side trip to crystallite if we have time we might even take a waterway cruise to the north pole i broke off and dug donley in the ribs man you never fished until you have a martian flying fish at the end of the line i grabbed a ruler off the desk and began using it as an imaginary rod and reel talk about fight oh sorry mac my ruler had amputated part of a floppy lettuce leaf that hung from mccleary's sandwich i settled down in my chair again and started paying attention to my lunch nothing like it i added between mouthfuls of liverwurst how about entertainment young winked slyly well you know the wife will be along i said but some of the places near the grand canal and those martian mist maidens brother if i was unattached there ain't any life on mars mcclary said suspicious again all three of us looked at him in shocked silence he says there's no life on mars donley repeated you ever been there mcclary i asked sarcastically no but just the same all right i cut in then you don't know whether there is or isn't so kindly reserve your opinion until you know a little about the subject under discussion i turned back to donley and young really a wonderful place for your health dry thin air nice and cool at night and beautiful from marsport you can see low-slung mountains in the distance dunes of soft red sand stretching out to them if i were you bob i'd forget all about the ozarks and sign up on the rocket there ain't any rockets going to mars mccleary said obstinately isn't i corrected i mean there is besides mccleary just because you never heard of something doesn't mean it doesn't exist the government's still working on v two mccleary said flatly they haven't even reached the moon yet i sighed softly acting disgusted at having to deal with somebody as stupid as mccleary mac that's the government and besides they're dealing with military rockets and did you ever hear of the government perfecting something before private industry who perfected the telephone the radio television the government no private industry of course private industry has always been ahead of the government on everything including rockets get on the stick mac mccleary started in on his lettuce leaf again looking very shrewd how come i never heard of it before now he asked springing the clincher argument look mac this is relatively new 
the company's just starting can't afford to take full page ads and that sort of thing just give em time that's all why a couple of years from now you'll be spending your vacation on venus or jupiter or some place like that from now on california and the bahamas will be strictly old hat mccleary looked half believing where'd you get your tickets i waved vaguely in the direction of downtown uh, there must be at least a couple of agencies downtown might even be able to find them in the phone book look under interplanetary rocket lines or something like that you might have a little difficulty of course like i say they're not too well advertised mccleary was about to say something more but then the one o'clock bell rang and we went back to the office grind well mccleary didn't say anything more about it the next day even though we'd throw in a chance comment about mars every now and then as if it were the most natural thing in the world but mac didn't rise to the bait we gradually forgot about it the next couple of weeks came and went and then my two weeks in august like i said before my vacation dough had gone to pay the doctor so i stayed at home and watered the begonias the monday morning after vacation we were all back in the office if anything looked more fagged than we had when we left when lunchtime rolled around donnelly and young and i piled our lunches on donnelly's desk his desk was near a window on the north side of the building so we could get the breeze and talked about what we had done during vacation mccleary ambled up and like it usually does after mccleary comes around the conversation just naturally died down after a two-minute silence i finally took the hook okay mac i said i know you're just dying to tell us where did you go he almost looked surprised to mars he said like he might have said aunt minnie's the three of us looked blank for a minute and then we caught on it took us a while to recover from laughing and my sides were still aching when i saw mccleary's face it definitely had a hurt look on it you don't think i did he accused us oh come off it mccleary i said crossly a gag's a gag but it can be carried too far where'd you go california oregon some place like that i said i went to mars mccleary repeated hotly and i can prove it sure i said like i can prove the world's flat and it's supported by four elephants standing on a turtle's back like the old greeks i cut off mccleary had thrown a couple of pasteboards on the desk and i picked them up the printing on it was like you see on a pullman ticket it said something about a roulette first-class passage on the martian prints for one hundred and fifty four dollars and seventy five cents and there was even a place where they had the tax figured in two blanks at the top of the ticket they had it filled out to e c mccleary and wife the bottom half was torn off just like they do with train tickets very clever i said but you shouldn't have gone to all that trouble to have these printed up mccleary scowled and dropped a little bunch of kodachrome slides on the desk i took one and held it up to the light it showed mac and his wife mounted on something that looked like a cross between a camel and a zebra they were at the top of a sand dune and in the distance you could see the towers of a city the funny thing was the towers looked a little but not much like minarets and the sand dunes were colored a beautiful pink i passed it on to donnelly and young and started leafing through the rest they were beautiful slides mccleary and spouse in front of various structures in a delicately tinted marble and crystal city mccleary in a pink and black boat on a canal that looked as wide as the mississippi mccleary standing on a strangely carved sandstone parapet admiring a sunset caused by a sun looking half as big as ours and everywhere were the dunes of pink sand pictures can be faked mac i said he looked hurt and got some things out of his desk a sateen pillow with scenes like those on his snapshots an urn filled with pink sand 
a tiny boat like a gondola only different a letter opener made out of peculiar bubbly pink glass they were all stamped souvenir of mars and that kind of junk you don't have made up for a gag i know mass-produced articles when i see them we couldn't afford the first-class tour mccleary said expansively but i figure we can cover that next year he turned to me puzzledly i asked the passenger agent about the princess of mars and he said he had never heard of the ship and it's mars city not marsport couldn't understand how you made a mistake it was easy i said weakly i pointed to the pasteboard ducats where'd you get these mac he waved generously in the direction of downtown like you said there's a couple of agencies downtown you know sometimes i think we misjudged mccleary it takes a while to get to know a guy like mac maybe his louie is brighter than johnny and maybe his chugmobile is something terrific for the last few years all on account of mac my two weeks in august have really been well spent beautiful why from mars city you can see low-slung mountains in the distance and dunes of soft red sand stretching out to them and the sunsets when you're standing on the parapets of that delicate crystal city and man fishing in the grand canal how do you get to mars there's probably a couple of agencies in your own town you can look them up in your phone book under vacation at the planets of pleasure or something like that they might be a little difficult to find though you see they're not very well advertised yet End of two weeks in august by frank m robinson